So that has been it guys for the 2019 Russian Grand Prix and today in this video we are going to recap what exactly for all the teams happened in this Russian Grand Prix that was not too great but not exactly the worst Russian Grand Prix we have ever had. Now before we get into the teams and how you know they did and how everything unfolded let's first get into the official results of the Grand Prix. So the winning the Grand Prix for the fourth time, I believe, at this track is Lewis Hamilton and also Mercedes continuing their 100% win record in Russia. Valtteri Bottas finishing second, doing a very good job as a number two driver. Third, Charles Leclerc. Fourth, Max Verstappen. Fifth is Alex Albon. Sixth is Carlos Sainz. Seventh is Sergio Perez. Eighth, Lando Norris. Ninth, Kevin Magnussen. Tenth, Nico Hülkenberg. P11, Lance Stroll, P12, Daniel Kvyat, 13th, Raikkonen, 14th, Gasly, and 15th, and last of the runners that did finish, Antonio Giovinazzi. And then your retirees are Kubica, Russell, Sebastian Vettel, Roman Grosjean, and Daniel Ricciardo. Now let's get on to the race winners, Mercedes. Now in the first 20 laps or so, it was not looking good for this team. Lewis Hamilton's pace did improve. Um, as Ferrari were about to come into the pits as the medium tyres finally started to work. But the first 20 laps were not good for that team or for Lewis Hamilton or even for Valtteri Bottas. The medium tyres were simply not working as they thought it would. Now, of course, with Sebastian Vettel uh, retiring from the race and causing a virtual safety car that allowed Lewis Hamilton very nicely to pit put on the soft compound tyres, come out in the lead and eventually win the Grand Prix once Valtteri Bottas was ahead of Leclerc after Leclerc's a second pit stop under the second safety car of the race. Now, were Mercedes and Lewis Hamilton lucky to win? Yeah, they were. But at the end of the day, they were there to capitalise on that happening. They still had to be there to capitalise on that happening. And they brilliantly... Pulled out, um, you know, the great pit stop. Lewis Hamilton came out of the lead. And they did all they had to do in the race to get the best result they could. And they did by getting a 1-2 finish when that result after Friday or even Saturday really did not look possible. So, great result for the team. Uh, for Valtteri Bottas, let's talk about him. His pace was not good today. It really was not good today. But I'm not really going to criticise him that much because at the end of the day, we knew he wasn't going to be as quick as Vettel, Leclerc or Hamilton ahead. And you have to say that for the team, he did a very good job by holding back Charles Leclerc and he played his role in the team absolutely perfectly by holding up Charles Leclerc and allowing Lewis Hamilton to build a gap and for the team to get a 1-2 finish. So I can't really complain that much about how Valtteri Bottas drove today. Was he quick? No, he was not quick. But at the end of the day, with the, how the race unfolded, he did what the team wanted him to do. So I don't think we can really complain that much about Valtteri Bottas. For Lewis Hamilton, not that great of a drive. Uh, but again, had to be there um, around the virtual safety car period to capitalise on the virtual safety car period. And went on to win the race. Great result for the team. And again, showing why they are so hard to beat in Formula 1. Next up, there is Ferrari. And what a roller coaster for this team. So, at the start, Sebastian Vettel gets uh, Charles Leclerc down to turn 2. And then Vettel pulls away from Leclerc relentlessly for the first, uh, what was it, 21, 22 laps, something like that, until the first run of pit stops for both cars. Now, of course, there is some controversy when it comes to Ferrari because Charles Leclerc, according to him, um, he wanted to be let through by Sebastian Vettel and apparently... I'm, this isn't confirmed. Please do not quote me on this because I don't know this to be a fact. But I believe that Charles Leclerc believes that there was an agreement for Vettel to get into the lead and then Leclerc to be let through. Now, 
If that is true, I can understand why Charles Leclerc was angry. But at the end of the day, once the first uh, pit stops were out of the way, Leclerc was ahead. And I think Ferrari did um, get Leclerc ahead of Vettel in the best way possible. Because, you know, Sebastian Vettel was clearly faster than Charles Leclerc in the first stint of the Grand Prix. So if they put Leclerc ahead of Vettel, who's to say that Leclerc would have pulled away from Vettel as much as he did? You know, who's to, who's to say that? And again, the best way to swap drivers is through the pit stop phases because then, you know, your rivals cannot, you know, close up on track. So the way they did it, I was, you know, fully supportive of. And I can't really see Charles Leclerc's point that, you know, greatly. Again, if there was an agreement, then... You know, I guess fair enough. But at the end of the day, he got ahead eventually of Sebastian Vettel. And if Sebastian did not have a reliability issue that caused the virtual safety car, Ferrari would have had a 1-2 with Leclerc winning ahead of Sebastian Vettel. I have no doubt about that whatsoever. So I don't think Charles Leclerc can really complain, um, you know, that much today. I don't think he really can. Yes, maybe at the start that was a bit, you know, not great for him, but he got ahead eventually and it was, you know, the team's fault, uh, or not the team's fault, but, you know, the reliability issue of the Ferrari power unit as to why Leclerc didn't win the race. It wasn't because Sebastian Vettel did not let Charles Leclerc through. Um, and also, when it comes to the start of the race, Leclerc did not defend from Sebastian Vettel. Now, I don't know for sure if that was planned, but who's to say if Leclerc defended that Vettel wouldn't have got through anyway? He might have got through anyway around the outside because Sebastian had a better start, he had the slipstream, and he had more momentum going down to turn two. So Sebastian might have gone to the lead anyway, even if Charles Leclerc defended down into turn two. So I think this, I guess, controversy is being um played up a bit too much i don't think it is really that controversial it's not the reason ferrari lost today that that's not the reason ferrari lost the reason ferrari lost was because the reliability issue and also ferrari for some reason when the safety car came out decided not to pit leclerc at the first opportunity they waited another lap then they pitted him so that is why Ferrari did not win, not because Sebastian Vettel was ahead of Charles Leclerc, because again, after the pit stops, Leclerc was ahead, and if there was no reliability issue, no virtual safety car, Ferrari get a 1-2, so I think, you know, people need to focus on how Ferrari actually lost the race, not because of that, it was because of other reasons, but let's now get on to Red Bull. Uh, Max Verstappen finishing in P4. He didn't really get through the field that quickly, to be honest. Uh, the pace of the Red Bull was not that great, if I'm being honest. Um, but, you know, P4 was the best he could get, really. I mean, did he deserve to get P4? Not really, because I think he was clearly slower than the front four drivers. So he got the best result he could, considering the pace of his car. Alex Albon, a uh, very good drive from the pit lane to P5. He did get a bit lucky with the virtual safety car and then the safety car coming out. So, of course, he could put on soft compound tyres and get up to P5, but still had to put in the work to get up to P5. So, good drive, and he has, I think, mostly redeemed himself for what has been a poor weekend up until the race. But Red Bull... I guess not bad of a weekend considering the circumstances and they actually outscored Ferrari today by I think seven points so not a bad weekend and hopefully at Honda's home race at Suzuka they can get a better result. Now into the midfield uh, Renault, uh, Nico Hulkenberg I thought today drove not great but it wasn't too bad. At the end of the day though and I'm going to say it again, Renault, poor result considering where they qualified or where they started the race from. They started the race from P6 and P10 and they ended up with a retirement and P9 and, or sorry, P10. And they only just got P10 because Stroll was very close to Nico Hulkenberg 
at the end. So, yeah, not good enough for the Renault team. And it really shows, again, why Renault have had such an unsuccessful 2019. Because no matter what they're doing qualifying, they cannot, like McLaren, consistently turn that into real points on a Sunday afternoon or a Sunday night, no matter what race it is. So, yeah, Renault, not good enough. Uh, Daniel Ricciardo, of course, was basically out of the race after that contact of Giovinazzi and Grosjean. Nothing much Ricardo could do about it, but uh, I'll, I'll analyze that in the incident analysis video, you know, coming out tomorrow at 12 p.m. UK time. But uh, yeah, again, not good enough result for Renault, and that is why they have had the season they have had. Next up, McLaren, very good result for them. Carlos Sainz, P6, he drove so well, he was so much quicker than the rest of the midfield and even his teammate Lando Norris. Great drive by Carlos Sainz and again showing why he has been the best driver from the midfield in 2019. I have no doubt about that whatsoever. Lando Norris drove well, not as well as Carlos Sainz, but he did get very unlucky with the virtual and then full safety car period because if that didn't happen then I think Lando Norris would have finished right there with Carlos Sainz and that wouldn't have allowed Albon to beat the two McLarens in the end, I believe. So it's a shame for, uh, for Norris, but still good result in P8, I believe. And another good result for McLaren, that is 12 points in the constructors from this race and continue to secure P4 in the constructors. Next up is Alfa Romeo, absolutely awful race. Antonio Giovinazzi was caught in a sandwich between Grosjean and Ricardo. I don't think there's really anything Giovinazzi could have done about it. Um, and then Kimi Raikkonen, you know, just had an awful race. He jumped the start by a mile, showing clearly that he is, you know, 39 years old. As soon as the five lights came on, he went. Uh, I can't believe he, you know, did that. And then, of course, uh, he was after the drive through penalty around the back. And then once the uh, safety car came out, he pitted. But then he had a front jack problem. So it was held in the pits way too long and actually did well to finish in 13th. But Alpha today just were not quick. And the race result was absolutely terrible. And after this weekend, Alpha's 2019 is over, I think. I think they've got to concentrate now on 2020 because this season they've had too many chances, um, you know, to get great results and get after teams like Renault and Toro Rosso, and they haven't took them. So I think it's now time for Alpha to really focus on 2020 and making a better car because Alpha this season really could have got P5 in the constructors, but they're not going to get it now because like Renault, they're not consistent enough. So very poor by Alpha. And yeah, their season is over. Next up is Haas. And for the first time in a dry race since the Monaco Grand Prix, Haas have finished in the points. Kevin Magnussen finishing a P9. And I think K-Mag was one of the best drivers in the midfield today because Kevin not all the time had that great of a car. I think half the race he did have a you know a car that was nice and quick. The other half of the race, you know, the car in terms of pace was dropping off. Of course, when Perez passed him at turn two, he did go um, across the track at turn one and turn or not turn one, turn two and turn three, and that did cost him what would have been what P eight, but still P nine, great result and. We can definitely now start to say that Haas are getting on top of the issues they've had in 2019 and they're getting closer to being a proper midfield runner again in 2019 and going into, of course, 2020. Next up, Toro Rosso. Both drivers drove not bad, but it wasn't great. Uh, Kvyat, I think, did pretty well considering the horrible weekend he has had from hell this weekend uh pierre gasly was kind of meh you know uh, like a, a five out of ten i guess for his performance but yeah toro rosso like alpha have not had the pace um this weekend to compete for points their car just simply as i predicted in the preview for this race their car is not suited to the, to this kind of track so that is disappointing but 
I think uh, again their engine supplies home race at Suzuka they will definitely be stronger because that is a better track for Toro Rosso and then finally the final midfield team is Racing Point good result for them Sergio Perez in P7 Stroll was very close to points but didn't get it in the end and yeah, it was a good day for Racing Point. We knew that they would be stronger in the race. We knew to be a dark horse for points, and that's what they got. And um, considering that they have had the best development out of anyone since the summer break in terms of the pace they have gained, definitely look out for Racing Point in the final five races after this race because they could catch Renault. They could catch them because Suzuka, historically, good track for Racing Point. Also, uh, Cota can be a good uh, track for racing point. Mexico is Perez's home race, and it'll definitely be up there. Um, and then Brazil is always good for the team. Abu Dhabi is not as good, but again, those are tracks where historically racing point can get some points finishes from the past. So look out for racing point for the final five races of 2019 after a great result today in russia but guys that is it for this race review for the 2019 russian grand prix and until my incident analysis it's been me chazer hd goodbye